wondering why no guy ever asks for my number when I go to the bar. I never go to the damn bar. This is so humiliating! I don't know if anyone else is like this, but one thing that really makes me angry is being ignored. Like, you can be busy. You don't always have to talk to me. But tell me that. And we're all good. Something about the fact that they're literally looking at your text and just not replying just doesn't sit right with me. I am absolutely convinced that men don't actually want relationships. Like, men want their lives as is. They want to go about their day exactly as it is do whatever they would normally do and just want somebody there when it's convenient for them or you know for the things they want to do like i'm convince me i'm wrong i genuinely like to know single men why are you don't pursue anymore i'm currently single i've only been in one relationship and it was three years long how long have you been single about a year any any dates since your last appearance on the show any, no nothing nothing let me wingman for you I, I would love that. I got you. Do you? Destiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been trying to, there's... What's the success on that? Do we have a date planned? I can arrange. Okay. Are you down for Destiny? I honestly have more sex chemistry with his wife. Okay, this is strictly for the dudes. Um, I just want y'all to know, like, I pride myself on being very independent. Like, I don't need um, anything from anybody. Like, I got this. Um... So, with that being said, if you see me at the gas station and you are interested in um, talking to me, maybe asking me for my number, the first thing you need to do is offer to pump this gas. Not pay for it, but pump it. Don't come over there talking to me while I'm putting in my PIN number, opening up the cap to my gas tank, grabbing the nozzle and pumping the gas and think I'm about to sit here and have a whole conversation with you. And you haven't even offered to pump the gas for me. Like, what? One thing about me is if you're going to start acting nonchalant, I'm going to start acting not your bitch. <laughs> okay, but actually to reinforce your Duluths, I was once ghosted by a man that I really liked, only for him to tell me nine months later that he was actually really in love with me. It freaked him out. He didn't know what to do. And therefore, he just decided to never speak to me again. I hope that helps. Gotcha, bitch! That's what Chad and Tyrone tell women to keep them in their orbit, or back pocket until they hit another dry spell. When the main baddies aren't texting them back, they go to their backup plan. Although the reason he could have ghosted is because he found someone hotter, and now that situation ship is over, he fed you that line and he hook, line, and sinked you. Like a charm. Had he honestly loved you, he wouldn't have dropped off the face of the earth. This isn't him getting trapped in some portal after he realized he loved you, or he got lost in the wilderness trying to find some magical place like the Chronicles of Narnia. But these females in the West so badly want to believe the lie that a top 10% man finally wants to settle down with them, that they beat all the other bedwenches and finally got a player to commit, that they'd rather believe and find out the hard way than be told the truth and deal with reality. They'd rather hold out for a player till their 40s than build something with an honest guy who's willing to invest in a relationship with her now. A boy once ghosted me and came back into my life four years later, told he had thought about us getting married every day since we met when we were 14 and then ghosted me again. That comment just proved my point. Had that been actually true, he would have actually married her. Granted, four years is a long time. That's a lot of bodies she could have added to her body count. Four years ago, she might have been innocent and worth getting into a serious relationship with, like a high school sweetheart love story. But since these females are starting to screw in middle school and on, after those four years, she could have become jaded already and irritable and have that thousand cock stare. This happened to me. Gave him another chance, did it a second time. And there you go. You can't make this shit up. That's the new romance for modern women. Ghost them and they'll act like you're their long-lost love. Meanwhile, she could have met the best boyfriend ever, who was there the whole time, never missed an anniversary, invested a lot in them. Then she gets a text out of the blue from this chatter Tyrone, and she leaves this great boyfriend to quote-unquote figure things out with this player, only to get ghosted again after she lets him hit it. I have literally ghosted someone for the same reason, ha 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 ha. Had a guy tell me he had deep feelings for me the night before he ghosted. I'm convinced every man who's ghosted or broken up with me felt this way. As if you needed more proof. This seems to be the best comeback to resurrect ghosting them. This is hardcore game. These females are being played hard because these players know how to use their ego against them. And this can be easily avoided by keeping their damn legs closed and wait until marriage. But these females would rather shoot, get a load shot on them first, and ask questions later.
Well, first date in Chicago and I got stood up. I still have not heard from this man. We were supposed to meet at 7 p.m. Dinner, he picked the place, he picked the time. We confirmed it yesterday. Still have not heard from him. I got there at 7.02 and I waited till 7.20. I didn't leave till 7.20. Just didn't show, just did not show up. <sighs> this was my first date of the year, y'all. Is this what Chicago dating is like? You're just not gonna show up? Did you get in a car accident? Are you dead? I was really excited to dip my toe back into the dating pool, but now I'm like, I'm done. This was a Michelin star restaurant. And when I walked in, I didn't hear from him. I was like, oh, I'm walking in, I'm here. <clears throat> no answer. I said his name at the receptionist. They're like, oh, we don't have anyone by that name. This is not a place you walk into. If you don't have a reservation, we're not getting a table. I should have known. I was really excited. Like I posted a video before this, like going on a date tonight. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Stood up, stood up. Chicago men, please do better. So let me get this straight. Not only is the first date at a restaurant, which is probably what she demanded, because she looks like one of those bougie, yuppie career women who thinks she's too good for normal restaurants, but a Michelin star restaurant, which means because of that prestigious award, the restaurant can demand high prices for their food. All of that cost for a date where he doesn't know the B-I-T-C-H? Only a fool will waste that type of money on someone he doesn't know. A Michelin star restaurant is a 10-year anniversary type relationship benefit, and she wonders why she's being ghosted. Let's just say this was a cream of the crop, high value man who can easily piss away thousands for one night. That man is going to take out the highest bidder, as in the best woman he can find, which means the most virtuous, attractive woman out there. The one that doesn't demand him to be an ATM the first time they meet to figure out if there's chemistry. She played stupid bougie games and found out that she's not as high value as she thinks she is. Also, these high value rich men are with young trophy girlfriends, not post wall entitled yuppies like you see in the movies. If they don't confirm the day of, or at the minimum two hours before, there is no date. That's true. A guy who can afford a Michelin star restaurant is probably super busy for work, so he could have thought she was the one who ghosted him when she didn't send him a confirmation text the day of or a couple hours before. She also came two minutes late. Who's to say he was there on time or probably early and when she didn't get there on time, he realized she didn't respect his time, which means she didn't respect him and bounced. Someone responds to the comment, Girl, I confirmed one hour before and I still got stood up. Dating in Chicago is exhausting. This is any big city and the consequences of feminism. Whoever drops their panties first for these top men wins. And there are plenty of new career women every year who will be happy to do no strings attached hookups with these top men. And the woman in the video responded, Stop. That is absolutely horrible. Who raised these men? Back to the men shaming. These men are acting accordingly and treating these 304s how they should be treated. Because when these career women were single at their prime, they too wasted a lot of males' times and ghosted them at the very last second because they found a higher value male. A dude commented, call his wife and ask if he's okay. That's funny. I wouldn't be surprised since most of these females are after the top men, that they're shaming them with other women. You dodged a bullet for sure. Sorry you went through all of that. And there we go. These females acting like they know who this post wall woman is. She's single for a reason. Yet she looks classy, but if she was as good as she claims or tries to project, no man would have stood her up. Men have to realize age is the biggest red flag. There is no such thing as a quality woman older than 30 who's single. And we're not talking about widows whose husband died by a freak accident or at work. We're talking about modern women who are bed wenches until they can't do it anymore. In short, at 30 and on, they're used up. Men don't always reject you or ghost you just because they're not interested in you. And this is why I always say dating is not black and white. I was just meditating and I wanted to actually know why have I not reconnected with this person yet that I'm actually genuinely into. And the answer that I got was because they're not at the same frequency as you. Like my frequency is up here. This person's frequency is way down here. Now my intuition or higher self, whatever you want to call it when you're meditating, said you're just a very happy person. They said we just think of you as generally a happy person. You find the good in everything even if you're going through a shitty situation and this person unfortunately does not and they are going through some of their own things right now that have nothing to do with you. Now you do have to somewhat follow the spiritual community manifestation in order to understand what I'm saying. But again, this is why I always say dating is not black and white because it's just not. The other answer that I got was, Brie, you are a very intense person. You are so confident that it can be overwhelming for some people. Now, if you're like me, you know what kind of woman you are. You know exactly what it is you want. You have boundaries, but you can also flip out on a man if he's not showing up that way, or you can just ignore them, whichever. I've done both. That can be very intense for a man that doesn't know who he is. That's not 
you know, hasn't figured out where he wants to go in life or who he is or who he wants to spend the rest of his life with, that can be really uncomfortable for some people. So again, I know that it could be so easy for your ego to say, oh, that person just was not interested in you. It's not always the reason. This is why I want you to get into meditation so you can ask your higher self these questions like I do instead of just chalking it up to one thing. This is massive cope. In reality, that guy was at a so-called higher frequency and he found someone who matched his level. These females are acting like spoiled rotten milk are better than fresh milk. They're past their prime. Had they actually been at the high frequency they claimed to be, they'd be married already with 10-year-old kids. Another thing, confidence in womanese is being super demanding and entitled. Back to the milk analogy. Older milk is on a discount or it's being thrown away because you can get sick from it, not at a higher price than raw milk. Her higher self is probably a demon because she's been a vixen most of her life, to explain in her mystical terms. What do you think of waiting for him to level up to your level? Should I continue to see him or forget about him? And that's the problem with these career women, is that they outprice themselves out of the dating market. And if the guy levels up, you won't even care she forgot about him because he's qualified for hotter women. The reality is, that's what she was qualified for. A broke chatter Tyrone because she demanded him to be taller and tatted up with muscles. But because her ego was so big, she missed out on some happiness. And instead of enjoying someone for who they are, she probably henpecks him like a mother, driving him away. This is so true. People who aren't at the same frequency as you do naturally drop out. Yeah, but these females are on the lower end of the frequency, thinking they're on a higher vibe than everyone else. That's why they don't even get approached in the first place. I was ghosted and it sucked. I matched with this guy on Hinge. We hit it off and we had great conversation. We started texting, lots of like shared interests. The conversation flowed well. He said many nice things that got me hooked. And basically I had to go home so I didn't get to meet up with him. I went home and we continued talking, which got me more invested, stupid. And then we made plans to meet up when I got back. I told my parents about him, stupid. I told friends about him and I just was in it. I was in it, I was in it. I got back and he ghosted me. We never met up and this isn't a crazy ghosting story. It's about the fact that like being ghosted just sucks. It feels shitty and you never know what's going on in someone else's life. It could have been me, it could have not been me. However, I do believe it takes two minutes out of your day to send a text message. This actually happened a few months ago. I'm good now, but I wrote a song about it and I think it's a fucking good song. It's called Ghost and it's out now. Damn, dude alpha widowed her into writing a song about him, like Taylor Swift when she gets ran through by another Hollywood celeb and she didn't even meet this guy. Also, I guess it was bad timing because she left for a trip and someone beat her to the punch. Women do this all the time, but on a daily basis. A thought wants to hang out with a guy in the afternoon. He's working all day because he's got to pay the bills. So she moves on to the rich guy who retired young at 40, who's got all the time in the world. Also, a man who's fluent in womanese or is red pill aware knows what goes on when women go on trips. They like to sample the men wherever they go, especially if it's to another country. And a woman who has traveled already isn't going to be impressed if you take her on a trip. You won't seem as valuable taking her to another country because she's been there, done that. She's comparing your trip to hers or any other man that has taken her on a trip. And unless if you're filthy rich, the experience won't awe or woo her. If you don't meet the standards of her solo trips, she'll think you're a lower value and look for a better man. The top comment says, Honestly, this has happened to me too many times. Guys don't give a reason and ghost because they probably use online dating to fix their boredom. Tell me you only match with the top 10% males without telling me you match with the 10% males. When the requests are simple, like texting back or being honest, it's usually guys who are swamped with female attention. Same, but we did hang out and it was so good and then all of a sudden he was sick and I never heard from him again. It's all in the universe's plan. More like he was sick of her. <laughs> and the universe's plan is to keep her single. Also, hanging out in womanese is getting banged out. This is the classical case of hitting it and quitting it. Smash and pass. Wham, bam, thank you, man. That's all it was. She put herself into the fun zone the moment she gave it up the first night they met, and the dude got what he wanted and bounced. Crazy about that, too. Do you not think that affects someone mentally? As much as we put it to The small text reads, When he suddenly ghosted me and witched up within a day without any explanation. Already these young thoughts are being broken, and they're not even 30 years old yet. There's 60 more years of this, especially when men stop giving her the chance to get ghosted. That's the MGTOW reality. What do you think the issue is with modern dating? Um, I think men are idiots. 
all of them. <laughs> if you're not sucking my toes, we're not gonna last too long. Oh, hell no! What's the worst lie you ever told an ex? That I didn't cheat on him. Oh. <laughs> uh, my I hope to get a girlfriend like you one day. Uh, yeah, I'm wifey material. <laughs> <laughs> she belongs to the street. How many people do you see on a daily basis? As many as you want. Today, how many have you seen so None. far? None. None yet? Not yet. Yo, I had my first one coming, and yeah, you know, I always say you can make as much as you want to make. What would you say oh. your daily average is? I try to like make five at least. Five what? Hundred. You said you've been doing this for four or five years? Yeah, four years. How much money have you made in the last four years? Oh my years? God, probably at least almost two million dollars. Two million dollars. All through the work. Yeah, but I was getting uh, high, so like, you know, a lot of it going. It's just... The lifestyle. Everything that goes into it. Does everybody know you out here? If a girl ever tells you this, it's time to move on. She's for the streets. So, how much money did you say you make each year? Wouldn't you like to know? Well, the last guy I was hooking up with did that. You should probably hit him back up then. You do not deserve me at my best if you cannot handle me at my worst. To be honest, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to handle that. Stop being jealous. We were just texting. Yeah, you go ahead and uh, keep texting them then. Is so quick to talk about like oh my god wake me up with morning head give me morning head to wake me up F not me i don't want your stank breath all over my poo tank so that when i stand up i smell like i got dog breath on me stinky as doo-doo doggy breath and now it's on me i know what i'm like in the morning i know what i smell and taste like probably not great i sweat all night i don't want either of us participating in that event we're out. Cancel us. Gonna go back to what I know. Gonna go back to what the fuck I know, man. This shit getting dumb. This not going. Yo, 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 what do you do for a living? Huh? What do you do for a living? Oh, thank you. Thank no, what, you. What do you do for a living? No, no. What? What do you do? For How old are you? I'm 21. How tall are you? I'm six foot one. Right now I'm six four though. Are you single? Uh, yeah. That's a tall woman. How easy is dating for you? Not too easy. Not too easy for sure. Why do you say that? As a tall blonde woman, I draw a lot of attention. And it's not in like a conceited way. It's just genuinely like I get a lot of eyeballs on me because I stand out. And a lot of men, it's very hard to be secure when everyone is looking at your woman. And I totally get that. It's just something that comes with having a woman that's like 5'10 or taller. Because I've had bad experiences with tall men and short men. I definitely... I'm attracted more to a person's soul and who they actually are than their, their physical. And feeling protected is more about a feeling, not a physical thing. You can't control what you look like. You can't control your height. So. And why do you think so many women lean on the height as a factor? He has to be 6'5 or at least 6'. Because they want to feel small and they want to feel all little and like a girl. Like it's, it's, it's bullshit. Stop the cap. <laughs> I am literally I am so exhausted from people that I am literally going to take this weekend and just fucking plan a fucking camping trip for myself and my dogs and just me in a tent no cell phone nothing no people <sighs> Did anyone else feel like this? Because I'm just so done with people and their needs and their emotions. It's time for me to go off the grid for a bit. How's being strong and independent now? When that career boss lady lifestyle doesn't end up being as fun as advertised. Did she really think she was going to get a higher paying career that's fun and not stressful? No one pays other people to do fun hobbies, because that's what they are if the jobs are fun. Hobbies. That's why it's called work. It sucks to do, hence why someone will pay you to do it instead of them. It's not like the sitcom shows where the female is some marketing director or miraculously affords living in an apartment in a big city on a minimum wage. The city girl lifestyle in reality is expensive, and if the skill isn't super specialized, you're going to make up for it by spending more time at work, including overtime. Most people who make a lot of money trade time for money, and today even the specialized jobs are 9 to 5, 5 days a week. 
Ironically, she has to make one final post about going off the grid, before going off the grid. This is just an attention post. Her life isn't important enough to be broadcast to the world. She's not curing cancer, yet she needs the world to know she's going off grid. That's classic narcissism. I give her five hours. Being off grid sounds good to these hipster females until they can't take a daily shower or have a fridge full of food. Just wait till she can't stream Netflix because her cell phone reception doesn't work in the wilderness. Modern women in the feminist West are the most spoiled class of people in the world. She should take her misery antenna out of her nose. That might help too. She's the stereotypical feminist, has a bull nose ring, has tats all over her body, and owns a pet instead of having kids. She's a future cat lady for sure. And so far, even in her prime or close to it, she doesn't seem too happy about being strong and independent. This is pre-hitting the wall, and she can't deal with the work stress and responsibilities already. This is why the wall is still undefeated. These are three ways to tell your girl is for the streets. Number one, she goes to raves. That's insane. They be half naked, the butt be out for sure. They go on there on crazy amounts of all the candies and stuff, you know what I'm saying. Grinding up on people like that's just crazy to me. Second way to tell is her snap is always hitting. She'll open up all the snaps and then just send one picture to every single snap. I be watching it. I be right here and I see them do that. But I know I'm, I'm the one, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day. That's just the game though. That's exactly how things are going to go. Why? Because I was at the top of the list. I had to distinguish myself from all the rest. Now I'm the one watching everyone get the same generic snap while I'm in buns. Number three should be at the bars. Bro, need I say more? That's crazy. Be at the bars getting all these drinks and stuff. What? Y'all be paying for these drinks too, bro. That's the sad part. She gonna take your money, it might be able to hit, and she out of there. I think going back to this picture thing on Instagram, if you're a genuinely pretty girl and you give off those nice vibes, you are going to get those attention from those yeah. males. But it's your choice whether you feed it or not. And then you're part of the problem because you fed it. Isn't it feeding it to post those pictures and to have an open Instagram account where any man can message you? Agreed. But you can go down the path of saying, I'm posting this to feel good, to do good He's for me. He's fucking those girls to feel good. And there's <laughs> other ways. <laughs> Oh is it stupid okay so posting pictures as a woman online i can't do that but you can go and sleep with multiple women because you're high value you don't have to stay oh. i'll replace you, you don't have well, to do you it. Don't have to if her ass and titties are on the internet that is an active billboard of marketing to get attention from other men and possibly through hypergamy transition away from you to someone else and if she truly loves you she will take that shit down does size matter to you? Yes. It does. It does. What is your ideal size? I want to say my ideal size is probably within like like 9 to 10 inches. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty big. Yeah, I like it really big though. You know, like if it's small, then I feel like I can't really enjoy it as much. Okay, so you're like a size queen. Yes. Got yes. it. So you said you like 9 to 10 inches. I want to see if you can guess 9 to 10 inches on this tape measure. Probably like that. Let's see what we have there. Show the camera. Okay, it looks like you got right at eight inches. Eight? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, I was close. <laughs> close. Honestly, but that's still pretty big. Yeah, this is pretty big. Yeah. I like it thick too. It has to be thick, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so you like it almost like bigger, bigger than, than my head. Almost. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, that's definitely big. All right. Whoever is the beta that tries to save her from the streets and marries her is gonna get cheated on or eventually divorce robbed because he physically can't please her. She's looking for a dollar foot long. What she described was another arm from a horror movie. You see that type of appendage on a horse. This is why if she has a high body count and she's attractive, chances are she's been stretched out by big old Johnsons. So next time you get rejected by one of these thoughts, just know it's probably for the better. What's your age? 22. Are you single? No. How long you had a man? Five years. And how long have you had a baby? She's almost two. Was it with him or with somebody else? With him. So how much does he have to make to take care of you and your daughter? Um, at least a thousand a month. A thousand a month? Food, you know, groceries, car insurance, diapers, wipes. Now how much would you say a man has to make annually to take care of a family of three? Um, annually, overall, at least 30 grand a year. On just a baby? Or? Every expense you would need for a stay-at-home mom and a child. 
But if he's spending 30K a year on both you and, and your daughter, how much more would he need to make to live comfortably? Oh, we are comfortable, that's comfortable. So a family of three could survive off of just 40K a year? Yeah. It's just not gonna be a lavish lifestyle. But this economy sucks. <laughs> so you just make it work? Yeah. Wow, she's a keeper. She's like 1% of all American women, because especially today, there are females who are much less attractive than her who wouldn't even look at a man who made 50k. This just proves to all the feminists who claim that they need to work a job because being a stay-at-home mom is too expensive. No, they don't. Yes, everything is more expensive and the quality of life in the West is worse than 20 years ago, but a family just starting out can live in a cheap area and cook home-cooked meals. The husband can start out working a humble hourly job and drive a used old beat-up pickup truck. So it is possible. It's just that these entitled females who look like streetwalkers and trolls think they deserve at least a six-figure man right off the bat. And he has to be handsome and funny on top of that. Wow, she's very realistic and knows that logically a family of three can indeed live comfortably but not lavishly on 40000 a year. More women like her are needed. Not 40, but 30k per year. A hundred years ago, in remote parts of the country, settlers got by living with an income of almost zero. They just lived off the land in their cabin or shack that they built by hand and hunted for food. She's based. Lucky guy. Would people rate her a six or call her average looking? Most guys will be happy with a six who can be happy with him making 30k a year. Granted, his goals should be to make more. But this beats any smoke show, because the saying goes, no matter how hot she is, someone is tired of screwing her. These super hot females are a huge headache and super spoiled. Depending on where she lives, 30k is enough, especially for back road and rural towns. Exactly. There are a lot of cheap places in America where you can live comfortably on a lower income. It's just not flashy or full of thoughts. And she's 22, and she's been with her man for 5 years, which means they started dating in high school when she was just 17. So they were high school sweethearts who probably lost their virginity to each other. She could pair bond fully. This is how most marriages should be. And because she has a country accent, I'm willing to bet her husband is a country boy, meaning he's masculine, which is the great equalizer. Just like a plain Jane can be more attractive if she's super feminine, a man can wear a $5 Walmart t-shirt and work an average job if he's masculine enough. The woman wouldn't care. All right, let's go, you little crackheads. I'm not gonna lie, I'm going a little fucking crazy today, so I'm not sure it's gonna come out of my mouth, but just rock with me here. I need to say this to the ladies that are pursuing athletes or dating athletes, specifically professional athletes, okay? Um, stop burying your fucking life six feet under because you see some fucking zeros on his contract and now you think you can quit your fucking job and everything else and just piggyback off of his success. That's great. Good for him. Until he fucking cheats on you, then what? Then what's up? Then you're stuck in this fucking relationship because you don't have shit on your own. So while he's fucking other bitches, you're self-imploding because you don't have shit, okay? Don't be this bitch. Get your bag on your own. Be successful on your own. Not to mention, men fucking love this shit. 99% of the time, the women that they end up with, it's because she already had it on her own before him, okay? So just keep in mind that this man is an addition, not a fucking replacement to your current life. I love you. Despite this thought being blessed with good enough looks to get pro athletes' attention at time, she hasn't gotten a commitment from one. Instead, the whole team passes her around, and when she hits the wall, she'll be empty-handed. Rich athletes, especially since they're successful, aren't looking for a career woman. The whole point of becoming rich is so the wife can stay at home to raise the kids. If these women are able to be in a relationship with a pro baller, all they have to do is make his life easier. Cook a hot meal and have it ready when he comes home after practice. Give him a back rub because he's sore all the time, and just be pleasant. That's how low the bar is. But because these thoughts who win the relationship lottery just freeload, there's no difference between them and the thousands of other thoughts who are gunning for that spot. So they get dumped and the athlete reloads with another bimbo. As being cheated on, that comes with being with a pro athlete. This goes for any high value man that's also physically attractive. He's going to get hit on and pursued by attractive women everywhere he goes. These women want the benefits of being with a celeb or a high value handsome man, but not the consequences. These entitled women need to get in their mind that they're part of the pro athlete's life, not the other way around. And if they are a thought, they're an accessory to his lifestyle, like a used condom that he flushes down the toilet. Women don't need to listen to other women for dating tips because a man will usually tell them what he does and doesn't like. Men are straight up and to the point. A relationship costs more to a man than a woman, especially today. 
so if a woman doesn't correct herself and he's self-respecting, he'll move on. My god! Captain, the lifeboats are ready to go. Should we load the women and children first? No, men and children first. Excuse me, sir. It's 2022, Private. A woman can handle a sinking ship just as well as a man can. And if you don't think so, you're a misogynistic asshole stuck in 2008! Yes, sir! Ladies and gentlemen, for the time being, I am requiring men and children only. Whoa! Are you kidding me? It's 2022. This is what you wanted. You wanted to be treated equal to men? Well, this is how men are treated. No, we don't. We just say that half the time. We don't actually believe in it. Yeah, we do. Come on. We're just as capable as men are. Shut, Shut up. up. I identify as a man. 2022. Jack. Do you think I could come up on the door? It's 2022, Rose. I wouldn't want to imply that you can't handle the ice-cold water the same way a man could. I think I'm dying, Jack. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I love 2022. Because you know he black. Your wife. I am definitely the head of my household. I, I ain't asked about the house. The wife is the head of the house. Are you the head of your wife? The household means the wife, children, dog, bills, it means it all. Are you the head of your wife? Jesse, do you have dementia, brother? Are you the head? You didn't answer that question yet. I didn't ask you about the house. I didn't ask you about the dog. I didn't ask you about the finance. I asked you about your wife only. I think, I think Jesse, you're developing dementia, brother. Come on, now, you're asking the same question, and you're not answering it. You know, or do you have a listening issue, my brother? I don't care about you, Jesse. I'll listen this time. Are you the head of your wife? I'm the head of my complete household. Wife, children. Come on now, dog. Dog, bills, everything. I didn't ask. That's not the question. Are you the head of your wife? Jesse, you have a hearing problem, my brother. You're not answering the question. How many of y'all heard me say that of everything? How many people heard me say it? I didn't ask about everything. Okay. See, they, they don't agree with you. You don't agree, right? See, they don't agree with you. We got to wrap it All right, everybody. Jesse Lee Peterson. Jesse Lee Peterson. We'll do a round for another time. You didn't answer the question. Yes or no question. Thank you. I asked you the head of your wife. And the answer, it, but the man is supposed to be the head of his wife. Did you hear me say I'm the head of my household? No, 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 wife, no, no, children. No, no, no. Okay, if you're not head of your children, then what are you? You said household means everything. Beta. Oh, nice. Beta. Now, we can't even talk if you don't have a woman, Jesse. Uh, yeah. I really want to know what it feels like to be the person in the relationship that once you come home from vacation, your partner's the one that is unpacking your suitcase, doing all your laundry, folding it, putting the suitcases away. Like, I want to know what he feels like right now. Really bad. And it's not like he's making me do it. I just, I can't look at that suitcase sitting in the hallway forever. So, when you stick it in my mouth, do you want me to look you in your eyes? Just blind a the breathalyzer, please, love. Why is it when you have big boobs, guys think that they're full of milk? It's saline. <laughs> There's absolutely no milk in my boobs. You only have milk in your boobs when you're pregnant. Surgery. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.